Good morning, Restore Community Church. It is my pleasure to be with you again. Uh, if you don't know, my name is Dustin Pruitt. I'm one of the, the leaders here at Restore Community Church, and it is my pleasure to be continuing on in this discussion of loving the Lord your God. Uh, this is a, a series that has been somewhat near and dear to my heart. Uh, not only did I, I write a lot of the curriculum for all of Restore Locations. So I've, I've done some deep dives, some deep studying, but I, I do feel like the whole message of the Bible is somewhat of the historical love letter God has written to man again and again and again. And so here we are, uh, uh, love the Lord God with everything. that We're pulling from uh, Mark 12, verse 30 here. Jesus is uh, saying, he was asked, hey, Jesus, uh, what's the greatest commandment of them all? We got a, a kind of over a thousand of them, almost close to 1,500, if you will. There's, there's different books of rule, you know, Levitical laws, somewhere like 60, but then we've added on since then. But which one of these is the most important? We've debated for years about this. We, us Pharisees and Sadducees, we've debated and debated. What's number one, numero uno, and Jesus responds with, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and all your strength. Now this is, he, he's once again quoting uh, from back in Deuteronomy, this is a, 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 a verse uh, called the Shema, or Shema, that Hebrew people would say this verse uh, again and again, Hear, O Israel, your Lord God is one. Love the Lord God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. And so he's repeating a verse back to them that they are well versed in. And I'm going to guess, uh, hopefully, if you've tuned into these previous messages, you are well versed in as well. And so here we are. We, we've discussed loving the Lord God with all of your, pers- with, with all of your heart, which... which in modern day times, we would kind of call our personality. When we, we think of heart, we think of like our emotions, uh, uh, deep feelings, where in the, the Hebrew understanding of the heart was your ways of thinking and your emotions, your, your, basically your whole personality squished together. So loving God with all of your personality We've discussed loving God with all of your soul, which in Ecclesiastes 3, verse 11, it says this. It says, He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the human heart. Yet no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to end. This this shard of eternity that God has placed within us, our soul longing. Uh, David had talked about his, his soul pants after connection in relationship with God, like the deer pants for water, so our soul pants after God. This this piece of eternity to love God with the very piece of what sets us apart from animals back to God. Loving God so deeply This isn't a surface level thing. It's not just my words. It's not just actions. It is everything so deep. We talked about loving God with our mind, which involves the choices that we make, our ways of thinking, uh, the things we decide to watch, the things we decide to follow, to listen to, to et cetera, et cetera. Loving God with our choices, with our mind. And here we are today, loving God with our strength. And I'm sure... When we think of strength, uh, often we think of like, ooh, strength, strength of arms, you know. Uh, oh, I, I go to the gym every day. I'm lifting weights. I have strength in my arms and my legs. you, you got to work that core. Core is so important. But strength isn't really what the Bible is referring to here. When we think of strength, especially in biblical context, and even today, strength isn't of arms. It isn't of your body. Strength is something else. Let's talk about a couple of these things. Strength of our influence. A new job position was created about 15 years ago 
called an influencer. These are people predominantly on social media that they promote products and they're paid for it because they hold influence on the people that follow their social media feeds. And so if they propose like, oh, hey, you guys really should be eating Doritos, these people will buy Doritos. And so the same thing with us, we hold influence. No matter where you are, what job you work, what grocery store you shop at, whatever retirement age you're in, I'm speaking to the 85 year olds as well as the 25 year olds here and everybody in between. You hold influence. You walk and influence people whether you realize it or not. So when we are to love God with all of our strength, we are to love God with our influence. And what, what is our influence saying? We're telling people things every day. We tell people things that we support and we tell people things that we dislike every day. And it may not even be with our words, it's with our actions, it's with our inactions, it's with our, our faces. I'm reminded in, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, it says, In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. What does is, what is, what is your influence say? If... I could have a printout sheet of your influence and the, these words showed up. What would it say? Would it say that somebody that you are Christ-like? Would it say that you're somebody who helps the needed, the, the needy, to, that helps the brokenhearted, that helps those that society has cast out? Or would your influence say, that you really cared about your outward your, your, your outward projection, the way you look? Would your influence say you really care about, if I can say this, you really care about the people that were born and bred here and not the people that have come here afterwards? Would your influence say that everybody should deserves a hot meal on their plate, a roof over their head, medical care? Or does your influence say, only the people that I want to have that can have that? What, is, what does your influence say? Are you, is your influence loving God? The strength of your influence loving God? Let's go to another uh, modern day if you will, form of strength, and this is somewhat pairs really well with influence, is the strength of your reputation. What do you have a reputation of being? Now, look, uh, my mom got remarried when I was nine, ten, and Steve uh, is my current dad, my, my dad since I was, you know, ten. Uh, Steve had a reputation in the neighborhood that he was the the handyman, if you needed somebody to, to help you to have a tool, Steve's the guy to go to. The neighborhood knew Steve is the man to go to. If you got a problem uh, going on with your house, with your, your, your garden, Steve would have something for you. What does our reputation say? Does our reputation say that God loves us? That God sent His only Son to die for us? That God is alive here today? Or would our reputation say something else? Would our reputation say, you don't want to go to that guy because he's not even going to give you the time of day? Oh, my man, you don't want to go to Bob over there. Bob isn't even going to take his headphones out to listen to you. Oh, you don't want to go to Michelle. Michelle over there, oh my gosh, she said some mean things about people. I'm being very light and fluffy here. Your reputation can say a lot of things about you, but is it saying that you love God? Looking around in the Bible, I, for verses about this, in Proverbs 22, verse 1, it says, A good name 
is more desirable than great riches. To be esteemed is better than silver or gold. All the money in the world doesn't hold value if, if you're scummy. Can I say that? Am I allowed to say that? If, you're, if, you're a, if your reputation is poor, it doesn't matter if you have all the money in the world when you, your character speaks of hate. Your character speaks of I only care about what's mine. Your character doesn't speak of love. So your reputation holds value greater than silver or gold. So are we loving God with our reputation? Speaking of silver and gold, this is a, this is a conversation, this is a topic that a lot of people get weirded out about. It, it, you're, you're, you might even be reaching for the mouse now to X out of this video uh, with what I'm about to talk about because I'm talking about silver and gold. I'm going to talk about your riches for a second. Now, I'm not some money-hungry American televangelist saying, if you donate 10 pounds right now, the Lord's going to bless you. I just feel if you just donate that 10 pounds. It's not about that. The Bible talks about where your treasure is, there also is your heart. So, where's our treasure? What do you spend your silver and gold, your assets on? Yo, my man, I just dropped 20K on this brand new car. I mean, I had one two years ago. I got a brand new one. Oh, I just got this really great, amazing camera. Oh, I got, this, I got the brand new iPhone. Yo, I got the, these new pair of kicks. Now, that might be a younger generation's thing. But where is your silver and gold? Now, I want to say, coming from America, I've never been part of a more giving culture than the UK culture. The amount of charities that I have encountered, the amount of these charities that I've seen people actively giving towards kind of blows my mind. That, that doesn't feel like in a very an American thing of giving to charities, like the way British people seem to give to charities. So I, I, I fully am commending the, the British culture that that seems to be a mainstay, a staple, that you are such a giving people. So if you're a part of that, good on you. you, you you've got this part of the lesson down already. But if not, where's your money going? Where's your heart at? In 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 18, it says, Command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. In this same way, they will lay up treasure for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age, so that they may take hold of the life that is truly life. Man, do you know what would be nice in my life right now? A new laptop. This isn't my laptop. This is the church's laptop. Man, a new laptop would be so nice in my life right now. My current one's getting old. It's getting slower. It's getting bogged down. It's, it's got issues. The battery's swelling, which means the keyboard and the trackpad doesn't work as well anymore. Man, it'd be nice. But if I'm laying up treasure for the life that is truly life. I need to be generous and willing to share. I need to be rich in good deeds. That this is what living a life that loves God with my strength of assets. Now, if you've not turned your, your, your TV off now, your, your computer off now, your phone off now, however you're watching, listening to this. Uh, I, thank you for sticking around. I, I did not ask you. Now, please donate to this charity as best as you can. As the Lord leads you to live 
a generous and sharing life. Let Him lead you. Let Him lead you to store up treasure and a firm foundation for the life that is truly life yet to come. And so lastly, uh, but, but not least, loving God with all of our strength. And I talked about it's not strength of arms, it's strength of influence, of reputation, of assets. It's also, guess what, strength of arms. <laughs> God has blessed us with ability. You've got, if you're listening to this, I believe you have breath in your lungs. If you're listening to this, you had the strength to click a video or to at least ask for it. If you're listening to this, if you're watching this, you've got something. And let me tell you, that something should be loving God. In Colossians chapter 3, it says, Whatever you do, work with all of your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. It doesn't matter what you're doing. When I'm washing dishes at home, I should be washing them as if I'm about to serve them on the table of the king. And I'm talking about the king, not the king here. The king. When I'm hoovering the floor, it's for the king. And putting in our best, not just good enough, we're talking best efforts here. It, this upcoming week, next week, we're going to be talking about loving the Lord's house. Now, I'm not just talking about the you know, four walls and a ceiling being the Lord's house. I'm talking about the community that is the Lord's church, His body here. Are we loving God with our physical ability? What are you doing to show the love of God to the people around you? With your physical strength, what's an area in which you're going out of your way? What's an area that you're volunteering your time? What's an area you're volunteering your expertise? Because you got it. It's in there. So it doesn't matter what location you're a part of here at Restore Community Church, even if you're just part of the online location, what is your physical strength doing to express the love of the Lord that you have for God? That ultimately with, with the, these four things that we've covered, our, our mind, our heart, our soul, our strength, you can't actually separate these things. Like, I can't love the Lord with all my soul and not love the Lord with all my heart. And then love the Lord with all my mind, but not with all my strength. It is all wit together. Maybe I'm just hungry, but it's maybe like cookie batter. Once you've mixed the flour and the eggs and the sugar, and the, the baking, so wait, baking soda, baking powder, you mix it all together, you got the batter. You can't separate those things again. They are in, intrinsically tied together. And also we're going to make something delicious, but something pleasing. Just as our life, who we are, what we are, our heart, our mind, our soul, our strength bound together. Have we made and are we expressing our love to God that is pleasing to Him? Or are we doing it that's pleasing for us? Or easy for us? Or it's convenient for us? Where are we at? So let's take this time. Let's, let's sit where you are. We're going to take a moment here. Sit where you are. You might be with somebody. You might be alone. But we're just going to close our eyes. And let's ask God, God, can you look over my entirety? My mind, my heart, my soul, my strength. 
Where have I held back? Father, what does my influence say about you? What does my reputation say about you? What does my, my assets, what does my silver and gold say about you? That, Father, I can rest knowing that you love me and you loved me first. While I was yet dead in my sin, you loved me, chased after all of us. You died on the, on the cross for our sins while we were yet still dead in them. So God, I want to love you just as much as you loved me. So Jesus, be with us every step of the way as you've been so merciful, so forgiving, so loving and shown us the way, given us the playbook. That God, we may be a more loving people that ministers to your heart in the way it deserves. And all God's people said, Amen. And amen. Thank you so much for stopping by, guys. Remember to tune in next week. We're going to be talking about loving the Lord's house. And I'm not, I'm not just talking about the building here. The community, the church that God has built here on earth. Loving his house. And what does that mean for us? So please tune in next time. You don't want to miss it. Until then, guys, bye.